the regular notice requirement of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act has been complied with and that adequate advance notice of this meeting was given in at least 48 hours in advance. On February 19, 2016, notice was mailed to the Courier Post, the Aldea. Notice was also posted on a bulletin board located by the reception desk at the central office in all school building bulletin boards within the district. Please rise with me to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will now turn the meeting over to our business administrator, Ms. Regina Robinson. Good evening. I'm going to do roll call. Ms. Teresa Atwood. Present. Mr. Jose Brito Bueno. Ms. Dorothy Burley. Present. Mr. Joshua Cole. Present. Ms. Taisha Minear. Ms. Minister Wasim Muhammad. He's in route. Mrs. Felicia Reyes Morton. Here. Mrs. Martha Wilson. Present. Ms. Catherine Blackshear. I'm going to call student board representatives as well. Kiana Grady. Alexis Hawkins. Here. Kyla Evans. Antoine Morrison. Camera Carter. Joshua Sims. Tymere Branch. Here. Dania Crisdon. Diciana Harris. Beatriz is Quidero. He's scared though. Dero. She's not here. Okay. We have a quorum. Yes. So we're going to close. Mm -hmm. At this time, the board will now go into closed session to discuss matters of personnel, litigation, and attorney client privilege. Um, and we will be gone approximately 40 minutes. Do we need uh, the stuff? What time should we say? What time? Um, so that would be 6 6 10. 6.10. And we will return at 6.10. Thank you. No, no, motion. Motion to go into close. Motion to go into close. Motion to close. Can I get a second? Second. Second. All in favor, say yes. 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 All opposed, say no. We're now in close. <laughs> at this time, I call for a motion to come out of close. Is there a second? Second. The motion to come out of close was made by Mrs. Atwood and Mrs. Muneer. All in favor to come out of close, say yes. 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 All opposed, say no. We are now out of closed session. I'm going to do roll call. No, you're on. Okay. Fair enough. So you um, ask over the game, right? So we're going to begin with the. Uh, no, we, we do. We're going to begin with the superintendent's report. I'm going to move up to the podium. Good evening. There we go. Good evening, everyone. So before we begin with the formal uh, superintendent's report, I want to welcome up uh, two individuals who are here to present our students with a really uh, neat recognition. Uh, so I want to welcome up uh, George Jackson and Jerry Baker, the, the respective president and vice presidents of CWA Local 1084, and they're going to give you a brief overview of uh, a really nice recognition for a number of our students and families. Good evening. George Jackson, president of CWA Local 1084 with the Camden County Board of Social Services. Normally when you think of local unions, you normally think of rallying and think of contract negotiations and settlements. But local unions and unions in general, we're more about faith-based organizations. We rally with them. We rally with families. We rally with communities. We rally with children. And we also rally with education. That's the reason why we're here today in regards to the Kindles that we'll be issuing out to the students. So I just thanks for having us, and we're really grateful to be able to have this opportunity to give these Kindles to the students. And it's my Vice President, Jerry Baker. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, as Mr. Jackson said, um, our Community Service Committee from the uh, CWA 24 every year does pretty good 
some major projects. Uh, we've done anything from doing a homeless thing. We took care of the Woodland School District one year. And this particular effort was in the planning for a while. It started out where it was pencil and papers given away. And then we found out that other districts were giving out Apple computers and laptops, and we figured the urban districts needed the same advantage. So at a function, I met uh, Payman Bahanaford, I got that right, and we talked about this in December. And he said, let's make it happen, and we did. We contacted Amazon, we secured 50 Kindles, and we came to the school board and said, we want you guys to handle the logistics, how to give them out. So they came back to me, we talked, talked, talked back and forth, and we finally made it happen tonight, and we're just so proud to present these Kindles to the kids who can use them. One thing I wanted to say was this. I look around the room and I see everybody sort of like in my generation a little bit, and we can remember in school, there was one thing that happened, one teacher, one event, one issue that changed our lives. For me, I'm a product of the Camden City School District, and I was in Hatch Middle School, and a teacher named Mr. Knighton introduced me to the AFL-CIO, or as a union guy said, the AFL-CIO in the eighth grade. And I never forgot that. And now, blank, blank years later, <laughs> I'm the vice president of a union. That was the impact. And we hope that these candles do the same thing to these children, whether they become graphic artists, whether they can access the internet and read more, be a lawyer, whether they uh, be a writer or a politician. So we just want these guys, and I wish you would come up now so we all can see you. Anybody who's on the list for the Kindles, uh, we'd like for you to come up so we can be recognized, so we can kind of look at you and say congratulations, and hopefully this will take you to the next step. Thank you. One more thing, I, I, I'm going to like to recognize our community service committee, our chairperson, Wanya Hines, our co-chair, Monica Fontenot, and our community service member, what, Deborah Kinsey. <laughs> These are the people whose idea was and who made it happen. And for those students who are not here, we have the list. They will definitely get their Kindle delivered to that school and will receive it in the same manner as these guys have. We do have enough, don't we? Yes. All right, there you go. Again, I would like to thank the Camden City School District for giving us this opportunity to be a part of this community. And I lay out the challenge now to anybody watching or here. We are one union in Camden City with one organization who did one project to have an impact on one of these children's lives. So I challenge any other union, nonprofit, or community-based organization to top us and come back next year and give out some Apple computers. How about that? Thank you.
Thank you so much, George and Jerry. And we've uh, so appreciated our partnership with you and working with Leroy, the president uh, here in Camden. Just give them another minute to get settled. All right, so before I jump in, let me actually just recognize a couple other individuals. We are joined this evening by a uh, local council member, Brian Coleman. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you for being here, council member Coleman. And we're also joined by a special guest who is on the State Board of Education. Uh, Joe Fisicaro has been a dedicated public servant uh, for a long time here in South Jersey and really serving across the entire state. And I can tell you from the many times I've visited Trenton representing Camden, he is someone on the state board who has been a tremendous advocate uh, for the city of Camden. And so I just want to welcome him up to the stage and uh, have him just share a few words. So thank you, Joe, for being here. Let's give him a round of applause. Uh, thank you again. I'm here tonight to see just how grateful Cam, uh, how great Camden is, and I, it just makes me feel good for what I've seen, both from the union standpoint and also for the kids. It is, it really is great. You guys are doing a lot better than I've seen in the other state-run districts because the parents are working, the administration's working, the board's working, the city's working. This is a great thing. I wanted to be here just to show you the state board support. I'm also the vice president of the state board. I've been involved in education for almost 40 years. Spent 35 years in Philadelphia, so I know what it's like. So I just wanted to be here tonight to give you my support personally because I want you to succeed. Because if you succeed, South Jersey succeeds. If South Jersey succeeds, New Jersey succeeds. I'm only 10 miles away from you guys. I know, I read it every day, I know what the great success that you guys are doing here. So uh, on the behalf of the state board, not only do I want to congratulate your advisory board. You know, there's a lot of things in between, a little, little stumbling here and there, but in the progress that Camden has made, it's really, really been, been great what I've seen in comparison to the other state districts. We're definitely not going to be 35 years like Jersey City, please. I want to get this back in your hands and running like an efficient school district before I leave the state board. So I'm just grateful to be here. I've got your agenda. There's a lot of stuff on this agenda. And again, I want to congratulate you for the way you all of you, the citizens and the kids and everybody else has, has come in and we, we're doing this for the kids. So I'm glad that we're all working together to do this for the kids. Again, thank you. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> so <clears throat> thank you to the Kip Cooper Norcross Academy for hosting us. This is uh, the second time we have now uh, gone to a renaissance school for a public board meeting. And I think, uh, as most of you all know, take care, Joe. Uh, we also have a traditional public school that's also nested here in this beautiful building. The, uh, the Whittier School grades two, three, and four are also here in this building. Uh, so we're, gr we're grateful for, to our hosts here and just good to be in the Landing Square Cooper Plaza neighborhood, Bergen Square, kind of the, the broader area here, as it's been a long time since we've held a board meeting in this area. <coughs> So to kick things off, and I'm realizing my clicker is over there. Apologies. So today we're going to go over a consolidated monitoring report and share with you all some thoughts on our corrective action plan. I'm going to welcome up our business administrator to do that. We're going to talk about some facilities, the Whittier building and the Camden High School building specifically. We're going to talk community schools, community benefit agreements, give you an update on park this year and close out uh, with science resources and then we'll do the usual district highlights. So that's our agenda for this evening before we gather back up uh, as a board. So let me welcome up Regina Robinson, our school business administrator, who's gonna walk us through uh, the corrective action plan. For those of you that are last meeting, this is basically a follow up to that conversation. Good, good evening, everybody. 
Um, from last month, we presented the findings from the um, Consolidated Monitoring Report, and tonight we're just going to give you an update on the next steps of what the district has to do with regards to the submission of our corrective action plan um, and the filing. So part of it, just to give you a landscape of next steps, so just to recap, in May, we had the OFAC team come out and they did their consolidated monitoring review with the district. In, these, in January, we shared the findings at our last board meeting. And in February, we had a solicitation from the advisory board with regards to the corrective action plan that we put together. And we are preparing to submit that to the state. And part of the highlights of the findings is just to kind of recap and say what the district is committed to doing. So as highlighted up there, um, the district is revising our parent parental communication and just making sure that we message properly with regards to any and all communication that should be going out to parents. In addition to that, we are updating the parental involvement webpage to make sure parents stay informed with regards to any messaging that needs to come out. In addition to that, the district will continue to provide additional training, especially in the areas of special service staffing, um, the child study teams, and speech therapists, which are critical and essential um, as far as part of you know, making sure we stay compliant with regards to our CAP. In addition to that, as I mentioned last month, you know, the district has invested with regards to upgrading our IEP software. So that is already underway, and we have implemented that within the district. Um, we will continue to update all procedures, anything, everything related to IEP review to make sure we stay compliant in that. Um, part of it is the submit all required reports and plans with regards to individual IEPs. And lastly, um, on the fiscal side, we are going to appeal the findings that came from um, the state with regards to those. So that is just the overall recap where we are with regards to the corrective action plan and what the district is committed to do as part of our March 4th filing with regards to um, responding to the CMR or consolidated monitoring report that came through. I'm going to turn it back over to Superintendent Rohana for it to go through um, the, the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Regina. All right. So I want to give you all an update on two facilities in particular. Uh, the first is the Whittier School. Uh, so this is a picture. I know it's not totally clear uh, up there, but if you can see, uh, that is yellow caution tape as the front steps of Whittier, even when it was serving students, uh, were condemned uh, because the building was structurally unsound uh, in the front entrance. It's a building that has had uh, just a really uh, hard time in the last several years dealing with disrepair as it's an incredibly old building. And I believe as most of you all know, Whittier School stopped serving students last year and most of those students are now here inside of this building. Uh, so really after decades of serving the Bergen Square community, and it's a school that has a long, rich history uh, in Camden, uh, it is currently vacant. And uh, you know, in many, many passing conversations and formal conversations, we have heard from members of this community that their preference is the school should not just be collecting dust. The school should not just be a vacant property here in this neighborhood, but rather we should put students back in it. And uh, at this point, uh, the KIPP school community, which has more demand than it has available seats, uh, those families have sat down with our team and have uh, told us that uh, a middle school could go into that building and we would like to move forward with that partnership uh, so that there's a middle school uh, inside of the Whittier building. Uh, and so uh, the, uh, the plan here would be that the school would serve fifth grade next year in a temporary location and during that time period, it would get renovated, a significant gut renovation to get that building back into shape and ultimately, one year at a time, phase up to serve grades five through eight. So we want to address this challenge of the building being in disrepair and uh, partner with uh, the Kip Cooper Norcross Academy to be able to renovate that school and to be able to serve students. 
So when we talk about overall facilities challenges in Camden, uh, our focus has always been across all schools. It's not just uh, Renaissance School partnerships and renovations, uh, but also uh, our traditional public schools, our district schools. And so in that vein, I wanted to share with you all an update on Camden High School, which uh, we have been in long conversation dating all the way back to 2007 uh, to renovate the building uh, in, 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 the, in the manner that's only fair and right and equitable for students in that building as it's one of our older buildings. So the commitment for those of you that haven't uh, been following the news on Camden High School is that the state has committed at least $50 million. $50 million. We think that number will come significantly um, higher over the coming weeks and months. So as of, as of today, we have completed the bidding process and the hiring of an architect and design firm. We have completed all need assessment work at Camden High School. And we have met with the state to ensure all renovation plans are aligned to students' programmatic needs. And so the next step is, in the next two to three weeks, we are going to share out the proposed design plans for the renovated school. And what we've heard from the community loud and clear is that they would like to see a career technical education element uh, in terms of the programming inside of that school. And we are, we are going to move forward with that. So the question will be what will be the themes and we would certainly love to align the programming to local job opportunities. So as we see new companies move into Camden like Holtec, uh, we wanna think deeply about how we can align the student experience to be able to serve them in a way where they can be first in line for local employment opportunities. So we're very much looking forward to having those conversations and being able to share with you those design plans in the coming two to three weeks. Yep. It will be a traditional public school, Camden High School. It will remain a traditional public school. Thanks, Father. Well, that's the reason we need to renovate the school, because the boiler, I mean, just the overall HVAC infrastructure is, is unsound. Uh, and so we've always had challenges with the heat. It's either too cold or too hot. You know, you turn the dial this much and the temperature fluctuates, you know, dramatically one way or the other. So it's an ongoing challenge. Thank you for ho holding us to account on that. And we're going we're gonna to do right by those kids once we renovate that building. And we're going to keep addressing the issues as they come up in the meantime. The children do have heat. The, so the, the, the question Vida is asking is, we're, so we're going to fix the, the problem in the long run by renovating it. In the meantime, are we going to be able to keep the building warm? The, the complaint we've heard recently is that it's too hot. So yeah, so there is heat, but we're trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. Every single day, we are paying close attention to make sure that we are addressing the building issues. And I've walked through there, and Vida, I agree with you. I walked through there on a day when it was 55 degrees in the hallway, and that's unacceptable. And ultimately, what we need to do is remove the boiler and put in a new one. And that's a huge project, and that's going to be part of the renovation. In the meantime, every single, every single time something comes up, we're going to address it. We've done preventative maintenance. We've put a lot of money into that building. But you're exactly right. Look, the state committed $110 million to renovate Camden High in 2007. And what happened? It was a broken promise. It was a bait and switch. It's not fair to students and families. The building hasn't been renovated yet. So I agree with you. And so the, we, we know what the long-term solution is. In the meantime, we will do everything we can to make sure we keep those students warm. I think there was a question back there.
110. All right, so we'll just take a couple more questions and we gotta move on. Sir, you had your hand up. So let me, let me respond to that in two parts. The question is, when it turns into a trade school, it's still have athletics. It's not technically a trade school. It's career technical education. So it, it will be, in many respects, a traditional high school experience. You'll have other elective opportunities and you'll take your core content area classes. Uh, but it will be career and technical education themed. Uh, and, and, the other, and, and the direct answer to your question is yes. So uh, it will, we will maintain the athletics programs. And all, so we're going to create four academies within Camden High School. And those four academies will all participate uh, in athletics for Camden High. In the same way you see currently Med East students and Brim Medical Arts students participating in Camden High sports. Gary, last question, and then i got to move on. Uh, so I think we need to continue to have the conversation with the community because it's certainly on the table that Brim and Med East could be part of the bigger Camden High School, given their students are already participating in extracurricular activities and so on. We just want to make sure we listen to those parents first because a lot of them in my early conversations are really concerned about that. And we've got to make sure that we uh, you know, mitigate their concerns and talk through the various issues that come up. But that's exactly what we're talking about right now. Mr. Barfield. Well, we haven't spent significant dollars yet. Uh, the work is still ahead of us. I don't, I don't have an answer for you because I wasn't here nine years ago when that commitment was made and, and then it was reneged. So, you know, those were, those were decisions were that were made by prior administrations, prior elected officials. I came in here, this is what we inherited. I can tell you that this was not a priority for the state until we advocated, until we pushed the state, until we got the support of our local elected officials who of course believe in renovating Camden High School. The state was not going to move forward on this. So we're grateful to be where we are. You have every right to be skeptical, every right to be skeptical. So until there's a shovel in the ground, until you see the work happening, I can understand that people think that nothing's really moving. And so we've got to make sure to continue to move with a sense of urgency. The public procurement process takes a lot longer uh, than when you do this work within a Renaissance school or charter school. That's just the reality of this work. And we're just going to keep pushing forward and look forward to sharing with you uh, more updates along the way. because they don't have to adhere to the same public procurement laws. That, that, that's it, pure and simple bottom line, that's it. They don't have to go through the SDA, we do. And we have to ab abide by public procurement laws. It takes a lot longer, there are trade-offs, there are benefits to the transparency of a public procurement process, but there's obviously the, the downside where you have to wait a lot longer. Then you layer on the politics of different administrations, different elections having consequences, and you have the situation that we're in. It's less than ideal. We should move on. I appreciate the feedback. 
think everyone here knows we, we have a constant conversation about Camden High School. The, the PTO there, Monique Ragsdale in particular, has been a, a critical voice and happy to host meetings at the library at Camden High to continue that conversation. All right, I want to spend a minute talking about community schools as this is something that has been coming up over and over in various community settings. So and at the highest level, the idea of a community school is that uh, especially our K-8 schools, our family schools serving uh, um, uh, the, the younger students, but also at the high school level, that our schools are building their roots with a point person, a community school coordinator, bringing in local nonprofits, bringing in partnerships, bringing in families, providing wraparound services, uh, and, and, and really uh, empowering families to help guide critical decisions inside of their schools. I would argue that in many respects, we are doing a lot of that currently in our traditional public schools. The conversations we've been having is to take that effort to the next level. So we do have a community school coordinator at every school today. However, there's certainly more we can do to provide additional wraparound services. One idea that has come up uh, through this process is to put a washer and dryer inside of our schools as many of our students uh, are showing up without uniform for reasons outside of their control and maybe uh, their family's losing them or they're not being properly washed at home uh, and many other just issues that stem from poverty that stem with challenged home situations so that our schools come together to serve all of our students' needs. And I want to recognize the NJEA and the CEA as they've been uh, doing a listening tour, a road trip, if you will, and visiting with our, our school communities. And we are working in partnership with them uh, to pilot in a handful of our schools this model. And so I just want to let you all know that uh, we are going to allocate the resources to be able to do this and look forward once we have a clear sense as to what this work will look like. Um, and we'll share that out uh, in a board setting. But I, I, for example, on Thursday, I'm meeting with the Wiggins staff uh, along with NJA and CEA uh, to talk through what this model could look like and look forward to meeting with other school communities over the coming weeks. All right, so this slide just speaks to the fact that the community school coordinator you know, leads a lot of this work, that the school is providing three warm meals a day. Um, and, and, and again, a lot of our schools already resemble the community school model. And so we just want to think about how we can elevate this work. So in a very, very similar vein, uh, we recently announced community benefit agreements with our Renaissance School partners. So the community benefit agreement with our Renaissance Schools is in essence uh, the same concept of a community school. And uh, the context here is that uh, that we have, of course, have had a lively debate in our board meetings and in informal settings about Renaissance schools. And one legitimate point of feedback, point of criticism, if you will, of Renaissance schools was that they're organizations that don't necessarily know Camden. Um, and so the idea behind a community benefit uh, agreement is that our Renaissance school partners, our nonprofit partners, are committing formally to build their roots, to partner with local nonprofit organizations to provide access to their facilities in the way they're providing access this evening, to ensure that the doors are open to the community in the evenings and on the weekends, to provide literacy workshops and health services to families. And they're not just here to open up for uh, first period and close up at eighth period, that they're really just a part fabric of the community. And so we're really pleased that our partners stepped up here and we recently uh, announced these community benefit agreements again. We have copies of them if anyone is interested in seeing them. And, and another element uh, is that they will provide preference in the hiring process to local residents by guaranteeing an interview for those who live locally who are applying uh, for positions within the Renaissance schools. All right, very quickly on park. Um, so just want to uh, go ahead and just share out that uh, we are in the early stages of planning for park administration and that the window for grades three through eight starts on April the 4th and for high school it starts on April the 11th. So feedback that we've heard in this board meeting and even uh, right before this board meeting I was attending our monthly teacher roundtable is that we need to uh, think hard about how we can create more flexibility and really reduce the amount of time we're spending on uh, assessing our students 
And we're pleased to be in a place where we have reduced the percentage of time being allocated. It's not to say it's perfect, uh, but we have, been, we have been able to reduce the time we've been spending on assessments. And the state responded to that as well, as now the park is being administered in one window instead of two, uh, which leads to 90 fewer testing minutes uh, over the course of the um, uh, administration of the assessment. So as far as the next steps, we're gonna be working with our schools to finalize each school's testing schedule. Um, and we will certainly aim to share as much information in the coming weeks and months uh, to make sure that our families are aware. Uh, there's a lot of bad information out there about PARC, and I feel like every single meeting something comes up. So I'm just gonna remind everyone again that we're not administering PARC because it's some gotcha test that we're using to evaluate teachers. Less than 15% of our teachers, it's even part of their evaluation, and for those teachers, it's only 10% of their overall evaluation score. It's not some gotcha test for our students either. Uh, it is strictly to get information to understand uh, how our students are doing, how we're doing as a school district, uh, as a city. And that information ultimately supports the student instruction, uh, the hard work underway each and every day. Uh, and so we're going we're gonna to go out there and make sure parents understand the tests year one, I think, uh, across the state. There were certain bumps in the road, whether it was with technology, whether it was with kind of the rumor and innuendo around parks. So we're gonna make sure that uh, our students, our families, our administrators, our teachers all understand that uh, park is simply here to give us rich information to support the hard work of educating our children. So the last item here before we close out with district updates, a uh, number of uh, folks over the last three, four board meetings had raised questions about some of our uh, science resources, and we just wanted to follow up and just give an update as far as you know, where we are there to ensure that you know, our students have access to the best resources possible. Uh, so I'm gonna welcome up our Deputy Superintendent Katrina McCombs to give that quick update. Thank you and good evening everyone. Um, I want to thank the superintendent for allowing the opportunity for me to share where we are um, with regard to the division of school support and the work that we are doing um, in the area of science resources. Again, I want to say that this is an overview, what I'm sharing with you tonight, so it's not anything that, it isn't, that is in a complete meticulous format, but it is our overarching plan for kind of looking forward to how to improve the quality, the um, amount of our science resources that we have available for our students in our schools. So if you take a look, you'll see a look at the past, present, and future, just a very general overview with where we have been, where we are now, and where we would like to go with regard to our science resources. So again, if we take a look at the past and the history of what's been going on with regard to our science resources in our buildings, um, the district purchased Harcourt science materials, and some of those materials range from student textbooks, workbooks, uh, science kits, teacher resource books, and big, big books for science quite some time ago. Since then, the district has been purchasing new material every three years from Harcourt to replenish the supplies. Schools have purchased replacement pieces, uh, again, science kit materials, workbooks, extra textbooks as needed. So the history of our district has been that once those uh, materials kind of ran out or we didn't have textbooks and it was up to each individual school leader to determine what was needed and to replenish those uh, science materials and resources as needed. So individual schools, again, Purchased the, re purchased the resources other than Harcourt while using their site utilized as a part of their science budgets, school budgets. So even if they didn't purchase Harcourt, they were able to have the flexibility to use other vendors that were approved by the district in order to refurbish their science uh, materials. And last point with regard to the past, the last science curriculum rolled out was approximately six to seven years ago. So presently, teachers in grade four, and this varies across the, the district, but the expectation is that teachers in grade four are teaching science during a 45 minute period. 
They use the Harcourt science materials that are still in building. Some of the same materials that I just alluded to in talking about um, the past state of our science resources. Some teachers may have ventured out and used other materials as our teachers do. They are resourceful and they go online, they go into um, different teaching supply stores and they purchase what's needed to make uh, make their science instruction come to life. Um, they may have also gone into different sites such as discovery education, etc. In eighth grade, as well as grades six and seven, students have a 45 minute or a 90 minute block. 90 minute block is usually for labs in which they receive science instruction from a science teacher. So currently that's the status of where we are now with regard to our science resources. So as we look at our science supplies inventory, um, under the direction of our senior lead, ed, senior lead educator for curriculum for science, uh, Ms. Janelle Williams, she has worked with teachers to pull this information together. So when we look at our inventory, both comprehensive high schools have a plethora of science equipment that are both usable and unusable, which is the concern, including microscopes, glassware, specimens, and chemicals. The major issue is a lack of consumable equipment. Science equipment for grades six to eight vary from school to school. Based on her assessment, most of the classes were equipped with what they needed for this year. However, there were teachers who were lacking equipment. NJEA uh, donated, and they were very generous, and donated over $40,000 worth of science equipment to all the high schools in our school district to support New Jersey Center for Teaching and Learning's physics curriculum. So that is one way we were able to infuse some extra resources into our science curriculum for this year, into our classrooms for this year. So based on the inventory that Ms. Williams completed, and it was very extensive, the next steps coming out of the inventory are that principals in the comprehensive high schools have been encouraged to clean out their science closets and establish what is usable and what is unusable so that we have a very clear indication of what may be stored away in closets that can be used. Usable but unneeded equipment will be redistributed to the middle school science teachers in need of equipment, especially glassware. Science teachers will be encouraged to use donors choose to obtain the equipment needed for this year. And I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken, Ashley McGrath is working with us and there has been an extra infusion of money through donors choose so that teachers are able to apply, fill out applications and receive science resources to help fill the gap until we get into our next school year, which brings me to our 2016-17 new science curriculum, resources, supplies, and textbooks. So we are currently in the process of writing a new science curriculum for grades K through 12, as well as a social studies curriculum. Our curriculum will include the labs and the list of resources that correspond to the labs that will be found in the newly created science curriculum. All science equipment and supplies will be purchased from a centralized place uh, prior to the start of the new school year. So what I mean by that is that we will be ordering centrally those materials that are needed for science because if we are to start off with a clean slate, we wanna make sure that, we, that we're not leaving it up to the principal's discretion to set the house in order, so to speak, when it comes to getting the science equipment into the buildings. But we will, from a central standpoint, order the materials and make sure that they are delivered to the schools. Textbooks and classwork will be available digitally for students at home and at school. That is something that we are also trying to broaden, um, being able to use digital textbooks, not wiping out all of our hard copy, our um, regular textbooks, but infusing in more digital resources for our science uh, instruction. Additionally, two final points. 
moving into next year, we're looking at after school lab classes to be made available for students so that they are able to work on science homework within our schools. And additionally, students with special needs and bilingual students will be given proper accommodations for textbooks. The district is prepared to provide these accommodations. So again, as you take a look, this is an overview. It is not, as I said before, it is giving you a sense of what we were able to take an assessment historically of with regard to our science resources, where we are now and how we hope to have our teachers to be able to utilize donors choose and also um, redistributing those uh, science resources that we have found that have been in excess in some locations so that we, were, we are able to, in a fiscally responsible way, get those, in, those materials into the hands of the classroom teachers that need them and then looking forward at the creation of our new science curriculum, our new um, curriculum which will have also a plan for making sure that we have the basic science resources and materials that are needed in our school buildings. That is where we are. Um, I look forward to at the end of this meeting or at any other time if you want to reach out to me and, and talk to me. I've had very uh, rich conversations with uh, teachers, with um, those persons in the community who are aware of the history of science resources in the district, I leave my door open to continue to have that dialogue so that as we move forward, we're working um, in a solutions-oriented way, collaboratively together for the best interests of our students as we move forward um, with making sure that they are equipped to be able to compete with any other student in the area of science. Um, and I look forward to having that conversation with anyone who'd like to have it. Thank you for your attention. That's me. Thank you, Katrina. All right, just really quickly here. Um, these are the Kindle Award winners. We moved them up front. Uh, so Black History Month, of course, there is a big performance. Uh, it's February 25th to the, and 26th, so I'm actually gonna be there this Thursday at Creative Arts Morgan Village. Uh, it starts at 6.30. Uh, so uh, anyone who's interested, uh, there are the two dates and the times. Um, citywide school fair, I think many of you all I recall seeing there, we had roughly 400 uh, families and students show up. Uh, huge thanks to uh, our staff who uh, put in a lot of time and effort to get this fair off the ground. So a few pictures there. College signing day, uh, I just wanna give a shout out to a number of our athletes who just signed uh, Division I scholarships. So uh, pictured here are Brad Hawkins, Ron Johnson, Josh Clark, Demian Thomas, and Daimiel Parker. Uh, so really exciting day for them. And we'll announce the retirements uh, back when we sit down. Thank you all very much. At this time, we'd like to recognize the retirees. Ms. Bell, Sylvia. Sylvia Bell, I'm sorry. Current title was Clerk to B, worked at Camden High School in Goodwill for 34 years and five months. <coughs> Michael Benton, professional at A, Bonsell Family School, 36 years, five months. Cynthia Breswick, teacher of elementary, Wiggins College Preparatory Lab School for 17 years. Dolores Colligan, Colligan School nurse, Yorkship Elementary School, 25 years, five months. Holly Garemore, school nurse, Camden High School in Goodwill, 19 years. Sandra Godbolt, teacher of special education, Camden High School, 29 years and five months. Maria Leto, teacher of special education, Wiggins College Preparatory Lab School, 19 years, five months. Devida, Devidra Mullins Muhammad, teacher of special education, Kramer College Preparatory Lab School, 30 years, eight months. Gail Norris, professional A, Forest Hill Elementary School, 26 years, four months. Fina Redrick, teacher of special education, Coopers Point Family School, 28 years, seven months. Gloria Rodriguez, professional A, Sharp Elementary School, 10 years. Alexis Skinner, teacher of elementary, Bonzo School, 16 years, three, month, three months. 
Wanda Tyson, Supervisor, Special Education, Special Services Department, 75, 25 years, five months. We would like to thank each and every one of them who have been here serving our parents, our students, and our community in all of the years that they have served us. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. I want to turn the meeting over to our uh, Business Office Administrator, Regina Robinson, to present the Business Office Agenda items. Lieutenant Rohanaford. The Board Secretary respectfully submits the Business Office Agenda items for approval, including the bill list, the financial reports, and 13 resolutions for approval. Any questions? Yeah. Questions? Share, share a microphone, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I had two questions regarding the superintendent's presentation. Um, the first one came on was about the Cannon High. Um, when we had last conversations about it, I'm not sure if I remember having conversations about the creative arts and medical arts integration to the Cannon High. So as those developments arise, if we could um, be informed so that you know we can you know be informed and involved with that process. Um, and also the second. Um, question or I guess compliment is about the uh, curriculum. So I'm excited to hear about any highlights uh, regarding the group of individuals that were selected for the uh, curriculum of science and social studies. Sure. So on the first, the question being uh, keeping everyone here up to speed on the Camden High renovations and specifically as it relates to Brim Medical Arts and MedEast. So both Brim and MedEast are in less than adequate facilities. And we have heard those concerns from each of the respective school communities. So Mideast at the Riggs Center, it's an old transitional home. And it's just a maze of a series of buildings and uh, ha has had a lot of issues over the years. Brim, I think a lot of you all know, is an old, uh, what is, is it a Bible uh, book? Is it, is it, they manufactured Bibles. They printed Bibles there. Uh, it wasn't intended to be a school from the very get-go. And so the opportunity would be that in the renovated Camden High School, uh, you could have those two schools there and have their own autonomous space. So it wouldn't be one big high school, but that they would have their own unique learning environment with their own principal and their own staff, but they would be part of a campus, the Camden High School campus. Now we need to continue to engage the families to ensure that this is a move that makes sense for both of those school communities. I've met with some of the students and I remember uh, whether it was Tymir or some of his other um, uh, peers at MedEast, we've, we've had a, uh, a series of conversations. I'll tell you, some of the students don't love the idea, and some of the other students are over the moon and can't wait uh, to move uh, into, the, into that renovated Camden High School. And it's going to take a few years, and we've got to always remind them of the overall timeline. Uh, but we've got to make sure uh, to further engage the families. On the science curriculum, to your question, um, uh, Katrina, why don't you jump in there and talk a little bit about the people who are involved in designing the science curriculum? Okay. If I may, before we go to the next agenda, if I may, sure. Madam, yeah, of um, uh, Vice President, um, if I may, just, just before we go to the next point, just talking about that point with Camden High School, I think it goes for the community for great conversation for the city. As an alumni at Camden High School, and which Camden High School did so much for me, especially there in the Parkside area, I think it goes for great conversation in the community to talk about this, uh, you know, the integration of the art schools and different things like that. So I just wanted to just put some extra emphasis on that. It sounds like a great idea. It's great conversation for the public and for the residents of the city of Camden and the students as well. And I just wanted to put that emphasis on that, that that would be that's something big as it relates to getting our students ready as we talk about college ready. It gets our students ready for that. It's like, a, to me, it's like a college campus um, with different business schools there and different things like that. And I think it serves for great conversation for the community. And we should get into that conversation now. Thank you. Thank you. So to kind of speak to um, who has been selected and, and who's writing the new science curriculum and science and the new social studies curriculum, um, that work is being headed up by our chief academic officer, Mr. Andrew Bell, along with our team of senior lead educators. And Mr. Bell is also getting support from um, Dr. Lavelle Bassett-Pugh, who's our county superintendent, who's also um, pulled together a consortium of 
individuals who are working on creating and revising their science curriculums, not only in our district, but other districts, so that we're not doing it in a vacuum, but we all are also um, taking part in group conversations with other individuals. Specifically with the science curriculum, it's based on the next generation science standards, which are more inquiry-based, project-based learning, hands-on lab activities. Um, that consortium is really working on building out science curriculum. So he's getting technical assistance while leading the senior lead educators along with teachers who have been selected based on recommendations from uh, their school leaders and based on recommendations from senior lead educators as they go throughout the district and they see best practices in science instruction, those individuals are also a part of the team that's writing the new curriculum. I don't know, if, did that address? Okay, you're welcome. It's just exciting to hear that, you know, all the different teachers that are gonna be involved in, you know, putting together the curriculum for, for the district. And so to so make sure that, you know, they know that we're supporting them and, and that, um, you know, it's an exciting time and we definitely like to, you know, hear any feedback and good things that are happening with that. Excellent. Um, Thank then, you. No problem. Thank you, Ms. McCombs. And then, Paymon, last but not least, I'm sorry, regarding your um, presentation, the Wiggins Project, there were some things that were requested two meetings ago at the Davis School, so I just want to make sure that, you know, we follow up on those things um, to get responses for those things. The, the Wiggins Project? Mm hmm the Davis, we had a meeting at Davis School two meetings ago. There was, oh, right, right. Yeah, so I just want to make sure. Got reminder, it. Reminder, just a reminder. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And then um, I just have, like, some minor, um, so on the report, agenda report, page 355, that we add the date on there for the OFAC consolidating report for January. It's an approximate, it says it's January. Just wondering if we could add the date. Okay. Five, three of 55. Oh, three of 55. We'll make the change. Okay, and that's it. Thank you. Any other questions on the presentation or on the business office agenda items, superintendent agenda items? All right, so in accordance with the powers vested in the state district superintendent under Title 18A, I hereby approve today's superintendent's agenda items and business office agenda items. I now want to turn it over for comments from our student advisory board members. Should I pick who starts? Good, after, good afternoon, my name is Joshua Sims. I go to Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy. I am a junior, and uh, I would like to say for some good news, uh, my Creative Arts Jazz Band just went to North Carolina, and we won first place in big band and small combo. <laughs> and we travel around all the country, and we're one of the best jazz bands in the nation, for some people who don't know, just, you know, because that's not advertised a lot. Also, um, but just on a, a negative note, what can be improved? I personally feel like as a student, now this is gonna be a big statement, um, the students still aren't passing tests, right? And I don't believe at first, you know, people say it's because of the curriculum, but I don't believe it's because of the curriculum because we can't pass park. It's because the curriculum is not being taught fast enough, right? So I'm in a class, right? And we'll spend a week on one thing. And you know, I'm a very busy student. So it was this one week where I was out of class for four days straight, and I came back and I didn't miss anything. Now that's that's terrible. And it's because you now this is gonna be another big statement. I personally feel as though we need to segregate the classes based on level. The reality of it is some kids just can't move as fast as the others. Thus, a kid like me who I could I could get the information one day and move on to the next topic have to wait an entire week and do the same thing over and over and over because somebody can't get it as fast as a child like me, but that child still needs that help. But we need to start segregating the classes based on level. If not, then the kids that could go off and be the doctors and the lawyers and the astronauts won't ever achieve that goal because we're all being taught at the same level. So I think that could be helped so we can all raise test scores that way. And um, I think Cameron will take it to you. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Cameron Carter and I'm a senior from Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy. And as Josh already stated about test taking, my other concern with test taking is most tests take up to three days to finish. So that's three lessons that you're missing out on 
even if the students that are excelling more, they still need those three days to learn more. So I believe the test taking should be dimmed down a little bit because those three lessons can always be valuable. Um, I'm very excited to hear about the science program because I have been talking about it a lot. And I'm excited that seniors are now offered a science class with physics because I wanted to take physics and I couldn't because it wasn't offered at my school. Um, on the downside of it is I'm still waiting to hear about a trig and a pre-calc class for our juniors because I don't want them to feel as though I don't want them to feel how I felt going to an AP calculus class without a trig and without a pre-calc class. And it was very overwhelming for me, but it's not fair for the juniors now to not be able to have that extra practice before they go into an AP calculus class. Um, our annual Black History production, you already know that it's this Thursday at 6.30, so please come out and support us. And that's it for me. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Alexis Hawkins and I'm a junior at Brim Medical Arts and um, I don't have anything negative to say, all positive stuff. So on behalf of all the schools here, um, I would like to ask the board to grant us permission for us to partake in any um, water activities such as water parks and the cruise. Um, and to touch back on what Mr. Ahanafar said about turning Brim Medical Arts into a community school, I would like the board members in the community to come out March 2nd or March 6th, don't quote me on that, but um, to come out and support us um, so we can get that funding. And um, when I find out the date, it will be on the board website or you will see flyers posted around Camden. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dania Krizen, and I'm a senior at Met East High School. Uh, I want to talk about the past two days at our school. We've hosted the STP conference for other big picture learning schools. And STP is a senior thesis project, which is one of our requirements in order to graduate. We've learned different things from different big picture schools, just like us, up in New York, Philadelphia, and Canada. Uh, well, Todd Mayor will be able to tell you more about that because I actually wasn't in the classes. I kind of was the one running everything, helping run everything. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I was able to meet Vi Sikahema at NBC10 because our school helps us do things that we want to do when we grow up. And I was able to go on a tour of M the whole NBC10 because when I grow up, I want to be a... Um, broadcast journalist or a TV person now. And, okay. uh, through the school-based youth um, service program at my school, I was able to attend the, the Pure Freedom, uh, the Pure Freedom Party at, oh, the Pure Freedom Party by Saving Grace Foundation, and it was ran by Nizia Easterling, and it was on um, February 6th. The program basically, uh, and mentored young girls and young girls from 12 to 18 about relationships and um, growing up in puberty. Uh, and lastly, I want to read a letter from me. It's for the whole community and everyone sitting here. To board meeting attendees and residents watching online or on TV. Recently in our community, families have been affected by an unfortunate fire. I'm trying to collect items for the families. We are asking that you can donate household supplies, toiletries, and if possible, clothing. Clothing sizes are as followed. You might want to write this down. <laughs> Teenage female shirt sizes, medium, pant sizes nine to 10, shoe sizes nine. For a girl at the age of eight, clothing, clothing size 14, 16, and shoe sizes five. We weren't able to get actual sizes for the young men in the family, but they are age 11 and four years old. If you wish to donate, you can email me at my first name, D as in dog, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, I as in ice cream, A as in apple, dot, cheer, central, like central office, at gmail.com. I will give you further information on where items can be donated to and when they can be donated. Greatest appreciation from, my, from the Camden community for your support. The sizes, the kid sizes, all of them? Okay, 
Teenage female shirt size medium, pant size 9 to 10, shoe size 9, for a girl at the age of 8, clothing size 14, 16, shoe size 5, and then clothing to fit an 11-year-old boy or 4-year-old boy. Um, also, toiletries and household supplies are what mainly we need. And if you have any more questions, I'll be here all night to email. Do you have another question? Okay. Hello, my name is Timer Branch. I'm a senior at Mady's High School. I'll be talking about the, the visitings that we've, that we've been having at our school. So as we all know, each senior at Mady's High School has to complete an STP, which is a senior thesis project. So we've had different big picture schools like us from New York, Philly, and even Canada come down to watch us, which is like, we're known as like the big model, big picture school. And we got to interact with other students from other big picture schools. They asked us questions. They actually took things from our teachers and took it back to their schools, like our project graphic organizers, which is how we organize our projects and different things like that. So it was a great experience for the teachers to interact with other teachers and like to learn new skills in different in different trainings, and it was a great experience for the students because, like, I met a lot of great friends on the way of this journey of two days. But thank you. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry. I know you guys already heard from me, but I don't know how it slipped my mind. Back on the topic of uh, music in all schools, so um, I believe this pamphlet, the uh, family enrollment guide, needs a little bit of updating because. You know, I was um, visiting schools and asking them, do they have music programs? And a lot of them said no. But I looked through the pamphlet. In terms of elementary school, it says over 28 elementary schools in the city of Camden have music programs. So me being, you know, the intuitive person I am, I called each, every elementary school and asked them, do they have a music program? Now, to all the elementary schools in the pamphlet, only two of them said they have a band program. And I know you guys said that um, some of them have music programs but not instrumental programs, but then I asked specifically, what does the symbol mean, the trumpet symbol? And I was told that that means they have an instrumental program. And I had called each and every individual elementary school and asked them, well, do you guys have a band program or at least instruments? And a lot of them said no. So, you know, just a little bit of update. So I'm still trying to figure out how we can get more and more kids to be um, tutored through the creative arts, but even, like, you know, 12 high schoolers can't tutor an entire city of Camden. And a lot of kids don't even know how influential music is. So I just keep advocating, please increase the amount of music that's in our schools. Thank you. Felicia? Yeah. Before you respond to the student reps, I just want to say I concur with the young lady from medical arts. As a board member, it's been challenging. Uh, to bring in resources um, with organizations that um, are, you know, foster around natural resources. And so it's exciting to hear that, you know, it's, you know, not exciting to hear that it's affecting you, but that, you know, you've become vocal on it um, and that it's something that you guys would love to explore. Um, f you know, it's due to a decade old policy that I'm sure Paymon won't mind, you know, explaining us about. But uh, I, it's good to know that I'm not the uh, corny one that thinks that, you know, the, the policy affecting now being able to take advantage of our natural resources is is corny itself. So, you, you don't have the water policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think we need uh, maybe our general counsel to follow up just to re refresh us on that specific water policy because I remember we amended it to allow the students to go on that field trip last year. So. Yeah, yeah. Two, Two years ago, so we should we should be okay there. And the student board members had raised that, so I actually think we may be all right. Um, so we've got to we've just got to follow up with you and confirm the specific trip you want to go on. So I'm not sure who gave you the guidance that. Please. Make sure that all the principal it gets sent out to all the aware. principals in the school so they can know for clarification. Thank you. And and you should encourage your principal to reach out to us too if for whatever reason word isn't coming out of the central office quickly enough. But we will. Um, so, so Josh, to your point here, that music symbol can reflect that it's a, just a general music class. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean instrumental. I'm glad you did your homework there. It's just that uh, uh, if some schools just have a, a, a general music class, which all of our family schools have during the year, it's not to say that we're doing enough. Uh, and so 
keep pushing us on this. Uh, we are currently in the budget process for next year, thinking about allotment for staffing, and this is a good push. Uh, it's exactly at the right time. And I want to talk to you more about how you all, and you're right, that a handful of high school students are going to solve the problem, but I still love the idea of you all mentoring and supporting our young people, so I want to pick up that idea as well. All right? Thanks. Any other questions from board members? All right, thank you, thank you so much uh, to our student board members, and we will now pivot to public commentary. I'm going to read the rules for public comment. <clears throat> the Camden City School District welcomes the attendance and comments from all members of the public at its meetings. This public comment period is your time to be heard on the agenda items in this meeting. Each person who signed up to comment will have three minutes. You will be notified when your three minutes are up. You cannot yield your time to another person. When it is your turn to speak, please remain at the podium and address all of your comments to the board vice president or the superintendent. Please conduct yourself in a respectful and courteous manner for anyone whose comments or actions either harass, intimidate, or threaten the safety of any person. We will provide you with a warning or immediately end your comment time. Also, if you curse, use vulgar language, or make personal attacks, we will provide you with a warning or end your comment time. We will not interrupt you during your three minutes of comments. Members of the audience should also not interrupt the speaker at the podium. If you have any questions, please ask your questions during your three minute comment period. After the public comment period is closed, the superintendent or his designee will address your questions to the extent provided by law. Uh, first speaker is Rosa Trent. Rosa Trent. Second speaker, Philip Lopez. Good evening, parents and distinguished guests. My name is Philip Lopez. My son is Nathan Philip Lopez, and he attends uh, Mastery of Kramer Hill. I just want to brag on him a little bit. Uh, he started there this September. Um, really, he just only knew his ABCs, his sounds, and all that. And now, I swear, he's just like a kid that fell out of Mars, out of space. I don't know where he came from. He, uh, he's, like, he's a CD-level reader. He knows over 250 sight words. He, he's, like, amazing. It, it, I, I don't know where he came from. I mean, he literally throws his joystick on his bed, comes downstairs and want to play teacher. He just, he, he tells me to sit down and picks up his marker and says he, he wants to play teacher and I have to sit down and it's time for me to just listen. And he just says, he writes his little sight word down and he tells me what is that sight word and I just say it wrong and just say it out loud and then he tells me, no, you gotta raise a silent five and I'm like, what is that? You know, and then, and then, I, and then he tells me, nope, you're, now you go down to a level purple because I spoke out loud. You know, I'm like, where did you come from, you know? So it, it, it's amazing what this school has done to my son, you know, because I'm, and it's, it's, on, it's only February. And, and, and I just spoke to his teacher and he said, my teacher told, his teacher told me that they're only supposed to know level eight, list eight, and he's at list 11, which is first grade level. And we're only in February. So by June, he'll be at least at list 15. And just today, she gave me all the way to list 19, which is second grade level. So by the time we get to September, where it's first grade, he'll be at second grade level. So my, uh, my son's going to be from another planet for real. He's an alien because, uh, you know, I don't know where this, this kid is. And this is, all he, this is all his doing. He tells me, Dad, I want to be on 
level 11. You know, I'm tired of level 10. You know, and all, all I'm doing is, is flashcards for like five or 10 minutes. I'm not doing anything special. And this is what the teacher is telling me to do. You know, it's not nothing special. And it's just a, the collaborative effort from the teacher parent. It's not nothing special that we're doing. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Your time is up. Thank you. Number three, Casbah Salam. My name is Caspar Salam, live at 330 Sycamore Street, Camden, New Jersey. May peace and blessing be upon everybody in here tonight. I want to first uh, speak on uh, a little bit what I'm doing. Right now, I'm one of the, 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 the help developers of Bergen Square. Y'all already put a, a Kip Charter School at Whittier. That's in Bergen Square. So um, I was here last week speaking you know, to some of the, the folks here that was very instrumental because we really wanted to put uh, a junior high in Bergen Square anyway. So, uh, but I, I talked about that particular area because you're talking about on 8th and Chestnut. First of all, I'm saying I'm in totally support of putting that school there. But then we have 7th and Chestnut, which is New Jack City. So it wouldn't be fair for our children or be walking past there. So we're, we're looking to, to, to do something in that area. And um, Pose will be uh, a, a female veteran housing there. So if we can work together, you know, and try to make some things happen and create jobs, and, and make sure that, that everybody participate in making sure that our contractors and, 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 and city uh, residents get jobs with you talking about building these schools and stuff like that too. Because yesterday, me and Councilman Coleman uh, signed up maybe about like 43 people to, to get jobs doing some of the stucco work in the city of Camden, paying pavilion wages. So that was good. My thing is, is putting the city back to work and looking out for these children, 100%. So I support that, and that's where I stand. So I, hopefully we can work together, probably putting the KIPP in, in our neighborhood plan, you know, to work together in that particular area. Thank you. Number four, Sean Brown. I want to know how five student representatives give their feedback, both positive and negative, about what's going on in their schools in the district. And when it's time for comment, the only question I hear from the advisory board is about trips to a water park. The mayor appointed you to do a job, not to sit quietly and be respectful. Three of you are former educators. And it doesn't make sense that as a former board member, I have more influence on what goes on in these meetings than you do sitting here as an advisory board member. Use your voice. Ask questions. Push issues. 12,000 students need you as grown-ups, as professionals, to do that. And it doesn't make sense that the student representatives have more power than you do. That high school students have, are more brave and have better ideas than you do as a, 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 a bunch of grown-ups at, grown at the table. It doesn't make any sense, and there's no justification for it. There isn't, and you know it. Secondly, I want to commend and thank Ms. McCombs for the presentation that she gave on science. As Felicia, and Ms. Wilson, remember, in 2012, when we as a board got the re uh, report on our budget, we asked our superintendent at that time, does this budget re uh, reflect all the needs and resources that our students need? And their superintendent and the business administrator said yes. At that same meeting, a student representative who has now graduated from high school said, hey, by the way, I don't have microscopes in my science classroom. I'm sure you guys remember that. So now, four years later, four years later, Ms. McCombs has given a presentation that shows a seriousness that this district is finally taking and make sure that a curriculum, resources that students and teachers need, and a budget are all aligned 
so that by the 2016-2017 school year, we actually have fully stocked classrooms of science equipment. This is a successful art district. For anyone that says, why does, the, why does this administration go, do so much to promote charters and renaissance schools and not do enough to support its own schools? Well, here's evidence right here that we saw in Ms. McCombs' presentation that that energy is being put in. I would just ask that I have three minutes to speak. Y'all don't have a time limit. Between closed session, these meetings, and the in-between that goes on between advisory board meetings, you got to speak up so that issues like science curriculum to make sure our students have the resources that they need are addressed properly. Number five, Kevin Waters. Go ahead. Good evening. We should not be in this building. That's the first thing. This building represents a return to educational segregation. I've already heard that term already, separate. Jim Crow is alive and well, only this time he is called charter schools like KIPP, Renaissance, Mastery, and whatever. What am I saying? School buildings have been labeled transformational. What they really morphed into are charter conversions. Better yet, a two-tier educational district. Anyone with a brain can see that. Actually, we are right back to separate and inherently unequal. The Brown versus Board of Education legal precedent said, we conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. Tonight, we are in such a building. Kip Norcross Renaissance. Bamboozled by a political agenda and an even more strategic desire to end unions. Oh, unions are America. Confused and bewildered, unengaged parents believed that their children were going to obtain a better, more proficient, and different type of education in these new school districts. Black and brown schools began losing dollars, tax dollars, and having their buildings transformed into the projected mecca of educational superpowers. I believe that one must have a willingness to suspend the idea of fantasy poaching. Most Americans graduated from a public school. We have achieved this in an urban setting. We went to college or the workplace without a blink of an eye. There is a fairly well-developed body of evidence showing that a charter and regular public school vary widely in their impact on educational growth and achievement. This research finds that on a whole, there is usually not much of a difference between a public and a charter school. In other words, there is nothing about charterness that leads to strong results, except for federal dollars. Y'all like that. Woodrow Wilson High School students received acceptance letters from schools like Rowan, Rutgers, Monmouth, and the College of New Jersey, just like charters. Now, this all took place in a district where it was said that only three college-ready students existed. It makes you want to laugh. Then we get school transformations like Pine Point, Bonzo, East Cannon Middle, McGraw, Molina. Did not have to happen. The narrative of making them a charter to receive grants to upgrade the buildings were disingenuous and served to promote a political agenda and not the much-touted Camden promise. If you really want to make a promise, if you really want to see all schools rise, try this. Now, you've already answered this question mostly. What resources can be made available to have bus transportation for all students since all students rise? Charter schools have bus transportation. What resources will be allocated to create science labs, which has already been talked about, but what is the timeline? What is the time frame for hiring a librarian for Woodrow Wilson High School can be in creative arts? What is Woodrow Wilson have to have? When is Woodrow Wilson going to have an auto shop, culinary class, wood shop, Cisco? Thank this you, Mr. Waters. Your time is up. all schools rise. I'll do this. Mr. Waters, your time is up.
Number, number six, Domingo Perez. Number six, Domingo Perez. Number seven, Alfred Banks. Hello, everybody. Um, good evening. I want to speak in reference to actually do a little follow up on what the gentleman was saying. Of course, I grew up here in Camden. I went to Pine Point, Soul School, and Woodrow Wilson. Definitely, there is a need to improve the public school system, without a doubt. And I believe that we, as parents, because I have seven kids, in the school system have to do more to hold the people that are in charge of making that happen accountable. Uh, however, kids still have to have the opportunity to get an education, a good education. They have to feel safe and I don't believe the charter, KIPP school, or any of the other schools who are providing that should be punished for allowing our children to get the education that they need. In addition to that, the public school systems, such as Woodrow Wilson, where I went, should improve through this board recognizing that the need for a safer and a higher curriculum should be applied in these schools in addition to the upkeep of them. I went to school in 84, 85. The school hasn't changed much since then. It's a lot of years. I understand listening to what you were saying that the superintendent was saying that these things are in progress now which I now will attend most of these meetings to see how that progress is progressing. Arguing and bickering is what's kept Camden down so far. I think that we need to come together as a group and deal with the issues directly that are confronting our school systems. Of course we're frustrated. Of course there's a lot of parents frustrated. It's not enough happening quick enough. Um, and I'm an example of that. I mean, when I was in Pine Point School, I graduated with all Fs. How did that happen? And I'm not exaggerating. I had all Fs, Fs in 127 days, and I got promoted. If it was not for me moving in my later years to California and going to a school system there, my life could have taken a different turn. So me being a product of the city, understand the need and the frustration of the other parents here when it comes to our public school systems. However, again, the KIPP school, for my children that go here, has proven to be a very good school. It was open enrollment, and from my understanding, it is part of the public school system because it's open for all the kids in Camden. Thank you, Mr. Banks, your time is up. Number eight, Sheila Davis. Good evening, Superintendent, Vice President Martha Wilson and the board. As a major stakeholder in 90 Square West, um, I welcome you to our new KIPP Norcross Academy. This school has really been a great transformation in our neighborhood. I can stand here proudly and say that the partners that we have, such as Center for Family Services, the Mayor's Administration, Rowan, Cooper Rowan, and KIPP has revitalized our community in not only our students, but our families in creating hope, hope that our kids can now go from cradle to college. It doesn't matter um, where you at, it, what matters is that you get a quality education. So therefore, as I stand here as an honor to stand before you, 
um, to share with you the continuing partnership um, and involvement in our community. Um, I'm proud to say that superintendent um, in our reading, our kids started out at a 37.9 percentile. I stand here proudly in this open record that our kids are now at a 63.5 percentile in reading. In math, it's public record that our kid at the end of the year started at a 23.1, 23.1 percentile in math. Right now today, our kids are up to a 68 percentile. I would like to applaud not only the leader of KIPP, but the teachers at KIPP for setting the bar. This is not only um, a great thing, but in partnership with the parents. So I welcome each and every one of you that stand here today. Take, a take the time to not only visit our school, but talk to the neighbors, talk to the families that attend this school. That is your proof. Talk to the parents that, that are elated that their kids can now read. Talk to the parents that their kids can now do math. Talk to the parents that the kids want to go to college. That is an option that they didn't have before. So on behalf of the Lanny Square West residents, um, we support great schools for all students. Once again, thank you and welcome. Welcome to Lanny Square and KIPP Norcross Academy. It's more to come, thank you. Number nine, Sharika Blaine. Uh, Sharika Blaine, number nine. Hello, hello. Um, my name is Sharika Blaine. I have a daughter here. She's in kindergarten at KIPP. And uh, she started in, in August. Her social skills have really improved tremendously. Um, she's reading now. She's on level two. I'm so proud of her teachers for just being patient. They're so they're just amazing. Um, her favorite subject is math. Um, her, her teachers really push her. Um, each classroom has two teachers, so they work with the students independently, and they I love how the teachers focus on the scholars and work with them independently. I like the convenience that you get from the teachers. You can call or text them. They help with the homework if you need help. And the parent committee is phenomenal. You, we have Saturday school, the field trips, uh, muffins with moms, donuts with dads. And they have computers here just in case the parents don't have like at home, the internet and stuff like that. Um, so. Overall, I am very happy with the growth of my daughter's learning experience. And yes, I look forward to being here for quite some time. Thank you. Number 10, Sheila Roberts. Good evening. I just wanted to come and stand in support of the KIPP Norcross Academy in their attempt to move forward with the rehabilitation of the Whittier School building located in the Bergen Square neighborhood. Everyone can see the progress that the students are making in this building that we're standing in right now. And they had, have taken great strides in the community to form partnerships and relationships with organizations, community leaders, and have spent time in the community, getting to know the area and working with the parents. And out of this outreach and engagement process, many of the parents have expressed a need for a middle school, which will be the second middle school because we have one in this building. Bergen Square is a neighborhood that doesn't have a neighborhood plan. And if you ride through Bergen Square, you'll notice it doesn't have a community school. And the Whittier School is sitting there deteriorating further. But KIPP is willing to go the length to identify funding 
not from the Board of Education, but whichever means that they have, whether that means they have to get a bond or what have you, they're going to use their money to rehabilitate this school, and I think they should be commended on doing so. Um, they heard the parents' voices for a need for a middle school and a community school in that particular neighborhood, which I feel very strongly will be a catalyst to help with a neighborhood plan and some economic development in that community because it's such a blighted neighborhood. And as Casbar spoke, saying that this is going to be on 8th and Chestnut and up the street on 7th and Chestnut is New Jack City. So I encourage KIPP as it moves forward to form a partnership also with the county police department before even going into the neighborhood um, to do any kind of construction to clear out the unwanted criminal elements that plagues that neighborhood right now. Because as all parents know, we don't want, we took our kids out of there for, and one of those reasons was because of the criminal element and deterioration of the school. But moving forward, we just as they cleaned up the neighborhood here in Cooper Plaza and Landon Square, we also want that neighborhood cleaned up so that it's also a safe environment for our kids. Our kids deserve to have schools such as the one that we're standing in and sitting in this evening replicated all throughout the city of Camden. I don't care what means it takes to do it because I know the Board of Education doesn't have the money to do it. So if someone's willing to put up money to advance our kids' quality of education in a building that's safe and an environment Thank that's you, safe. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Your time is up. Then I feel as though they should be able to move forward because our kids deserve it. Uh, number 11, Nasha. Verdez. Hi, my name is Nisha. First, I want to thank, thank the superintendent and the board for coming out and talking, taking the time to um, hear us out today. I am a proud parent of a first grader who comes here at KIPP. When I first started looking for a school for my son, I was looking for a school who would be able to give my son the best education due to him having an IEP. I was skeptical about KIPP, but they have proved me wrong in every way. My son started last year at the trailers. He had never attended preschool and he was so attached to me that he would ne not even stay with his father. But once he started school here at KIPP, he would literally cry every day because he did not want to come home at 4.30. And this is because they made, they made learning fun, fun. When he started kindergarten, he did not read. Three months later, he was reading by himself. This year, he has excelled even more. When, he, when it comes to math, he does it without counting his fingers. He is so quick, he helps his third grade sister. And when it, I'm sorry. Um, and when it comes to reading, he has jumped three steps in just one marking period. And that's because of these great teachers. As a mother, I want what is best for my children. For my children, when it comes to the education, I think KIPP is the best. And I think every kid in Camden should get a great education. That's why I think it's a great idea to open Whittier. Give every kid we can a chance to a better education and a better future. Thank you. Number 12, Gary Frazier. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, a couple of questions for you guys. I uh, have been at the last couple of board meetings, so I wanted to bring myself up to speed and ask, uh, where, is there going to be some sort of procedure for those uh, students who will be refusing the uh, park test? Again, that has been an issue um, with us here in the district that our students uh, reserve the right to refuse the park test. And I think that we as uh, 
advocates here and also this district could develop some sort of plan for those students who uh, choose the refusal of the park. Um, also wanted to speak in terms of uh, some things that I've seen as in my absence again. Um, so I see a partnership that is transpiring with the district um, in reference to community schools uh, by way of Uncommon. Um, I'm concerned a little bit about how that would affect the overall budget. Um, not so more so concerned about um, the community benefits that will go um, alongside of the building of the school. You know, I have no problem with that, but in, in reference to how the uh, coming of that school will affect the overall uh, traditional budget. And I, I see uh, there's a look of confusion because I, I, I think that, let me get some clarity. So the students, it won't matter to our budget until our students actually go into that school. So I think that could give clarity to it, um, what I'm asking and why I'm asking it that way. But I also know that there has been um, talks in the district um, in terms of uh, a partnership for our traditional uh, public schools uh, to be community schools as well too. And we are trying to entertain that so that we could uh, show the work that has been put on the ground for this to transpire. If the work is being done by way of our traditionals, and I do see this project coming um, here with Uncommon, and it is a large amount of money. And, and so with that being said, um, that project there, again, Mr. Paymont, I'm looking at where we are at with our budget right now in terms of our traditional schools and how it will uh, affect us overall in terms of moving forward. If you're going to, in fact, do that by way of schools that have been selected to be community schools by way of our traditional. So I would like some um, feedback on that because how, how could it be done? Um, but again, I do anticipate hearing some more feedback as you roll it out. And I did see that you uh, laid it out fairly well today because there were some serious questions that were going to come forth for it. But I know time won't prevent me to go a little bit more into it. So I'll allow for you to continue with your rollout uh, process of this uh, thing. I see that you know everybody's getting behind the, the movement of KIPP at Norcross partnering with uh, the community schools. We do know that KIPP, the school here, has complete autonomy in terms of um, its um, operating. And I think there needs to be an educational uh, course in terms of how schools are evaluated to determine proficiency. KIPP's only been open for a year. We are hardly anywhere, near as anywhere, to be determined where they are at proficient. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number 13, Helen Ferrante. Good evening. Tonight I will be speaking as a proud public school teacher from Yorkshire Family School. I would like to highlight some positive advancements within my particular school. We have moved from underperforming to two steps up to making progress for our school report card. We have made a few significant partnerships to help our school community in all their needs. We have a partnership with the Richard Stockton Elementary Public School in Cherry Hill which is a proven academic and character education success. We have also partnered with the Unforgotten Haven and Virtual Health to feed our families on a daily basis. We are a very dedicated staff that sets the bar high and to take care of all of our families' needs and give a quality education. We also hold a clothing swap at our school to make sure all of our kids have their proper clothing. It is currently open enrollment, so any parents don't forget to sign up for Yorkshire Family School. We are pre-K through eighth. Mr. Rohaniford, what positive statements can you say about Yorkshire Family School? And if you would like to hear from our parents, we have a Facebook page called Yorkshire Family School Lion Pride that has our parents that state exactly their feelings, which I will read. Our last one, I love that the school is close to home. He loves his school, he is taught well, and learns a lot. He loves math. Oh, he can read all by himself now too. So just like the charters, we at the public schools are excelling also. Thank you for your time. Number 14, Vida Ro Rossi. My name is Vida Roshi G. Roshi G. Roshi G. Sorry. No. Robo. A girl, she, and a G. 
Good evening. Mr. Rahanaford and board members and members of the Democratic Committee that is here to ensure that Mastery and KIPP and all these other schools are gonna take over our public school system. Let me tell you something. First of all, I wanna speak out about something that was leaked to me, Mr. Rahanaford. You have someone in your office that is a ghost employee. It was told to me by one of your employees that uh, Andrew Waxman, let me give his name, he's, certi he's not certified to be a project manager. The Oprah request for September the 3rd, 2015, resolution number 31. Check for copies of the timesheet. He has not been coming to work at all. Start time to finish time. That's still. I'm putting it on public record. Also, I spoke to you two months ago about what was going on in your office. Now we have children here, so I have to be careful what I say. But you know, the business that was going down in the DM, <laughs> in your office, okay? Uh, I see that you amended on page 11, Kimberly Buell's sexual harassment. I guess that was to comply with uh, what was going down. And you also stated that that would be backdated. So I guess that would cover that two months when I asked you about that. <coughs> I also want to talk to you about the Bonzer School. I want to inform the people here that uh, he has one of those double schools, Bonzel and Uncommon. Uncommon on the third floor, Bonzel on the first and second. Now, Ms. Ryder, being a community activist, I work for the children. I don't care whether it's a, re uh, a Renaissance school, a charter school, I want the children to learn. I was at that school and a fire drill went off. So the children from the public schools came down. 250 children from that uncommon school was left in there. Had that been a fire, we would have had a big tragedy. And then you lied to me. You told me, oh, they have separate schedules. Let me tell you something. The state is clear. When the bell rings, all must leave the building. Employees, custodians, children, and even you, if you're in there. How dare you put 250 children in harm's way and then lie to me? So I sent the fire marshal there. Did you get the fine? Now, I think you need to make sure all these double schools have their fire drills the same time at the same day and that everybody respects the state rules. I'm finished with that issue. Now, I also want to talk to you about uh, that video, the notorious video that I placed at the Camp De High, with the children with their clothes on, coats, hats, boots, gloves, no heat, 900 degrees in the other part of the building. You know what, children, I want you to look up Brown versus the Board of Education. Thank it means you, Mr. separate, Your but time is up. Number 15, Janelle McRae. Good evening. My name is Janelle McRae. I'm a Camden High School teacher. I have a few issues that I just want to make you guys aware of uh, regarding some things um, at Camden, well, specifically with my shop area. First and foremost, I would like to say thank you for the appointment of Mr. Almer Dyer as the Director of Career and Technical Education. With that being said, um, as we've spoken over the course of the last two months, he needs help. He needs help, not part-time help, but he needs full-time staff members to help support the redevelopment of our CTE program. He is doing an awesome job, but he cannot do it by himself. So if you can provide him with full-time employees to be beneficial to the redevelopment of this department, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, um, the day before the Thanksgiving game in 2014, my shop keys were stolen as I was um, completing the printing for the game. I have informed my head custodian, I informed the principal at that time, and I've also informed my current principal. When um, I got the response from 
my head custodian that my request for replacement keys has been denied by Mr. Steve Nicanella. And I do not understand why the request has been denied. Please understand that we are talking about a vocational classroom. If at any point I have to shut the emergency power off, there is no way for me to reinstate that power without going to another building. So if a student gets cut by the guillotine cutter and that power goes off, that child is stuck inside of that machine until I can find somebody to reset the equipment. There is no reason that I should not have keys or access to my power box or the doors. I have seven rooms inside my shop. There's no reason I shouldn't have access to those areas. Um, additionally, um, I've sent board items since November to be approved, and they have yet to show up. This is the first time I've seen one of my board items. Thankfully, um, I sent it back in June for my student to receive his scholarship, and it just got approved in this board minute. He has gone the whole first semester of college, and he has started his second semester without receiving the money that has been allocated to him. Um, with that being said, the, um, almost a decade ago, I did set up this scholarship fund, which has been identified specifically for scholarships. Money should not be taken out of this fund unless allocated for scholarships. If the board would be so kind to provide me with their account of this account, it would be greatly appreciated so that I can make sure that the budget matches up with mine. And last but not least, as a print shop teacher, Thank you, Ms. McCray, your time is up. as a print shop teacher, we Number 16, Sarah Jocelyn. Uh, thank you, Ms. McComb, for reviewing the science curriculum, past, present, future. I did want to ask it specifically which science subjects we're going to be um, dealt with. I um, am concerned of whether we're still offering environmental science, for example. Uh, I spoke with Ms. Kelly Wenzel from the Audubon Society, and she was very surprised that the three Camden City schools who last year participated on the Petty Island um, uh, trip, we're not participating this year. This is an opportunity for a field trip. It was used by the environmental science group. Certainly it could be used by other science groups as well. But it's uh, an opportunity within the Camden City area and we should really make sure that we're taking advantage of that. You mentioned about the digital textbooks. Um, I, my understanding from last month is that we have one computer for every, uh, you know, for every four children. So I was wondering if we're going to allocate computers for, for science students so that they can take them home. Uh, if that's a special situation or if, that, or if they're going to only be able to use them in school or if they have computers available at home, then they'll have a different resource. I think that's important as we moved into this digital textbook environment. And again, I'm bringing up the subject of 21st century learning, which is the library situation. We've already heard tonight that um, Yorkship School has a partnership with Richard Stockton in, in Cherry Hill. I spoke with the Cherry Hill um, today uh, on the issue of their libraries. They have librarians in their schools. Uh, they teach library studies at an elementary school level. And at a junior high school level, they are teaching, they have a, a, a project in place that requires them to do research that are specific for, for library in, in, in the ability to do in, uh, searches and to, uh, to use this. The librarians have a responsibility providing the curriculum, which means that every class is getting the same kind of curriculum. You know, so there's a set curriculum that goes there. We've talked in the past about how important 21st century learning is to be able to find information and use it 
Um, I, I did note last month uh, that the superintendent provided uh, for a future thing that we were going to do the 30 minutes of reading a day. I don't know why that's not being implemented this year and is not being implemented over the summer for students to prepare them. It was mentioned as something that would be implemented in the next school year. Certainly we can provide reading materials and make sure that that's being done as sooner rather than later because we know that's an important thing. I, I do want to mention that this week is National Engineering Week um, and certainly science related programs and, and uh, those types of things are important for engineering. We need to make sure that our girls as well as our boys are encouraged in a mentoring way to pursue uh, educational opportunities such as engineering. And, and that we uh, remind students that even if they aren't taking the AP course, they are able to take AP tests, for example, that AP physics class. Thank you. Uh, number 17, Nicole Goodman. Um, I just want to make a comment to this young man. Thank you so much for speaking. Um, we don't have music programs. We have traveling music teachers with push cards. That's not a music program. That's not a classroom. There's a difference. Okay, so I'm here to speak on several concerns with special services, as I have brought these concerns to the administration on several occasions, either in person or via email. So I figured since I'm written up by my director, Jill Trainer, every time I speak on an issue, I might as well bring it to the public and make it public record. So, children with IEPs and children who are in need of IEPs are not receiving services in the district. Children who need services are being declassified, not on grade level. And there's no services that's in place of to assist these children. I have two students currently who are in need of additional services and because of a rule that was implemented that's not according or aligned with the code, and by all means council, research it, um, they're not getting assistance. The Department of Special Services has lost 14 people in the last year and two more as of March. As much as you and others would like to believe, I am here to tell you that is not due to effective leadership. We have lost more people in a year than the 10 plus years that I have been employed. Retention of employees is an aspect of effective leadership. Therefore, I guess Dr. Agbana was doing something correctly because the mayhem we are currently in is the full ownership of Jill Trainer. We are currently paying Kristen Patterson Moss to be a supervisor of compliance and data over $90,000, and she is out of compliance herself, not only as an administrator, but as a worker. So, in response to the emails that I have received over the past two days from Jill Trainer, I'm here to tell you, and I'm gonna answer her email, evidence-based as aligned with Camden City School District core values, I have the evidence. So, what are we going to do that we are currently out of compliance and we're paying someone who was out of compliance, evidence-based, to try to bring us in compliance. You can't ask someone who was not in compliance to bring us in compliance. The other question I have, since we're one big global happy family, who should I write up or who should I contact the federal government on with IDEA when we have over 250 kids in charter schools not being serviced. Who's responsible for those children with IEPs? Is it yourself? Is it Ms. McCombs? Is it Jill Trainer? Who's servicing those kids? So when we sit here and we have parents come up to degrade our public schools, it's not about the school. It's about the children in the school. We're not here and we're not against the parents we're not against KIPP, we're against that you yourself continuously set us up to look like failures to promote the charter schools. Thank That's you, the Kirkman. issue. Time is up. There's no other issue. So in closing, in closing, what I'm going to say is that normally I attend meetings on a monthly basis. Every
Thank you, Ms. Goodman. Your time is up. Number, number 18, Robert Farmer. Good evening, Robert Farmer, uh, president of the Canton Education Association. I was just sitting here, um, I don't even know where to start really, but um, it's like, uh, since you open up a new school, it's the great formula. You know, share that formula with the, as they call it now, the traditional public schools. If opening a new school changes everything, why, why isn't um, our public schools, traditional public schools as you call them, getting this? You know, I can't see how a school just opens up and amazing things happen like a magic, you know, you're pulling something out of the hat. I sit here and I listen to the parents of the community. This community, you should be proud that you have a new school. You fought a long time to get this school in this community. The community should be proud. But I don't see anything that's going back to the traditional public schools. Share it with, I, I got ready to say with us, but we're all supposed to be in this together. You know, I, I, you know, it's really hard for me to sit here as a resident of the, uh, the city for, thir uh, for 33 years, okay, a product of this school system, the uh, traditional. I know it worked because I'm here, okay? We were giving opportunities. The playing field is not level, guys. It's not level. This is like a roasting of the traditional public schools tonight. And I really don't appreciate that. I'm a person that, if you're going to be able to talk about change, let's change. I'm not reading none of this off of here, things I wrote, because this is personal. It's very personal to me. You know, my board up here, a lot of people I know on this board, you know, how where is the commitment to the uh, traditional public schools? Where is it? I don't see it. We, kids don't have books. It's like we went back and burnt books back in the 1500s with this e, this, e, uh, this e book stuff. Where is the teaching of the Dewey Decimal System? Where is the tradition of having, holding a book in your hand? I raised two kids that were A and B students. Why? Because I gave them a book at an early age. Still today, they pick up a book and they read it, okay? I understand going into the uh, computer age and all that. Sure, we should have that. And I have nothing against KIPP. I have nothing against Uncommon. I have nothing against any of the charter schools that are here. But they should be alternatives. That's what they were created for, to be alternative schools for the traditional public education. And I'm just saying, guys, let's just knock it off in. If this is what it takes, give us a new school. And the magic things come out, give it to us too. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Number 19, Monique Ragsdale. Good evening. I just want to thank the students. Um, I was listening to what you were saying. And um, it's very important that what they said, that you guys really take heed to, because this is our future, and they are actually in these schools, and they are proud of their schools. One of the things that I heard them say is that they're sick of exams. Well, you know what? I agree with them. When you guys go and do that education and meeting about the park, they, have the re they can option out. Let them do something construction. Let them use some critical thinking skills, or let them exercise their self with the band. Give them an option and be truthful. Don't sit up there and lie to the parents and lie to the students and say it's mandatory. They have to graduate or they won't you know, pass or will be underfunded because we are already underfunded and they can't cut us no more. Um, another thing I wanted to uh, mention to you, um, on January the 20th, we had open house. I hear you speak of Camden High, but you do not know Camden High. We have career academics and cosmetics, print shop, Cisco, engineering, electricity, 
You said, oh, we're going to bring four Academy credits. That's, it was so embarrassing to hear you speak about Camden High. You should have been there on the 20th. Not, not only was the students excited about what they was doing, so was the educators, and so was the parents, as me, as a parent up there with a son who's an engineer who, 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 who built a robot over the summer and built roller coaster and built half of the stuff that's in that school. So when I hear people come up here and, you know, talk about, oh, the schools are not doing them, yes, they are. And when I hear that my child wasn't learning nothing, my children's education started at home. I just signed my three-year-old daughter to ECDC. She reads, she writes, she just got tested. Talented and gifted. And let me tell you something, she's only three years old. Three. We teach that at home. So when you really want to have a conversation about reform in this city, then we can have a serious conversation. All this other stuff, it's like a circus to me. I've been sitting here advocating, and then anybody can tell me that I've been on this board for four years about reform of education in our school. We're going to lose this community, not because of the fights of the different schools or the different kind of schools or what color your schools. We're going to lose it from our history, from the lack of education, and the lack of informing the parents. And as I said, and I vowed as, you know, I'm the president of PC, PTO at Camden High. I'm going to inform my, I just brought my parents back from Princeton. I don't pay for it out of my own pockets. I, was, I don't know who y'all got in head of CSS that's telling us what we cannot do and what we can do. Because if I have to open up my own home, I will continue to inform parents. When I'm telling you I'm serious about education, I have three degrees. I left the corporate world. I came back in this city to work in this city. I pay taxes here, and this is me. I'm not here for no, no recognition or anything. I'm here to prove to my children that we are what we can be. And when I tell them the sky's the limit, I meant that. So I don't want to hear nothing else. When these children speak and say they need something, they should, that should be executed. And our, our chemistry teacher, we have nine vacancies in Camden High. We on a hiring freeze, are you kidding me? A hiring freeze? I go to these leadership meetings and I'm hearing everything. I'm questioning. Y'all know I take notes. A hiring freeze? Come on, Thank Paymon. you, Ms. Rasdale. Your time is up. Number, number 20, Kevin Barfield. Good evening. You know, it's like a, I'm so disappointed. I, you know, that's why I know you, you could be happy because I haven't been here for months because it's the same old stuff. You know, and it's ingenuous sometimes, you know, superintendent, that sometimes, like I said, you get this thing where you want to dismiss when people come up here with the truth. Um, um, and the only reason why I'm actually here is because my son was playing Kip in the basketball, because otherwise I would have refused to walk in this building. That's how I felt about it. But um, then I thought about it. I was like, let me go ahead and ask the question. Why aren't we having a parent-teacher conference this marking period? You know, because again, you know, how, you know, it's the communication part. So again, like we said, we do all these things to promote these, these other alternative schooling, but when it still comes to what we need as parents, we're still not getting those things. I see that um, also while I was away in December, which I was asking about was the QSAC um, findings. So I would like to know how I can get a copy of the report that was presented with that. And then I see that, you know, even though that y'all pitch our plan in, I guess it still has to be approved before y'all release that. But even with that being said, I still would like to see the copy of the QSAC review, because I'm quite sure that part of that um, felon process is still dealing with the curriculum. So, you know, even with the young man, I can understand that, you know, um, that you're advanced and you're gifted. That's probably where we need to have some, you know, particular programs for individuals like you, but we still know that our curriculum is not in line with the standards, especially when it comes to our parks. And, um, and it's just like what the, um, the young lady was saying in reference to um, and watching the board meetings and individual teachers that have to come up here and talk about what's not happening in these individual schools and then they're being targeted because they're relentless and coming here and saying month after month after month what's not happening in these individual schools. You know, it's, it's really disheartening as a parent because again, you know, we become target because it's not about us being negative, but it's about, again, um, superintendent, you know, it's amazing that, you know, when parents come up here and say some of the things that are happening in the schools, it's being dismissed, like it's not happening. 
and, and, you're not, and you're not being forthright in the reality of what's happening in our schools. We're taking five steps backwards. And then the one thing that really was to piss me off was when I heard the response in reference to our park results. The park results, of course we did bad, because we were saying from the beginning that the teachers didn't have the technology to prep the kids before they even took the test. We knew we didn't have a curriculum. So again, so now when our children are applying for these high schools now, they're looking at last year's park results. Oh, you're looking so bad. Well, these kids weren't prepared with the park, the park instruction to be able to perform so it would be credible, because that's what they're looking at. They're looking at the park results, and they're looking at the report cards. We don't went four steps backwards, and especially dealing with our curriculum since you've been in, um, in the district, Superintendent. Number 21, Kelly Francis. Good evening, uh, Superintendent Board members. Uh, I'm going to keep repeating what I've said before about your priorities with regard to your tenure here, Mr. Lohanapard, uh, has been bass backwards. And if you reverse the first two letters, you know what I'm talking about, bass backwards. The priority should have been the high schools. That should have been the first order of business because they are the students who are at risk. They're in the final three years of their educational experience, and they need all of the opportunity and the options and that is humanly possible for them to be successful going out into the world, specifically in the poorest city in the nation where their parents don't have the resources to send them on to the colleges like the suburban parents can send their kids they should have had all of the advantages of the high-tech education to prepare them to go out and be successful in the world. That should have been the priority from the beginning. Now, John Corzine had his priorities in order. Before he left office, he appropriated $170 million for Camden High School, Pine Point Middle School, and rebuilding Landing Square School. But that, 40, that $170 million was withheld by Chris Christie, his first year in office, and nothing has happened until the Renaissance schools uh, were approved and began to uh, build, be, build. This $45 million here should have gone towards Camden High School. Okay? That's where it should have went because those kids are at risk. So as a result, since 2010, when Chris Christie withheld that $170 million, there have been six, oh, well, five or six graduating classes from Camden High, kids who did not have optimum opportunities, optimum uh, 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 resources in order to be successful. So what are they doing, most of them? Uh, they're not prepared for a job. There are no jobs in the city of Camden for them. Uh, uh, they cannot earn to be able to move away from the city of Camden. So, but I'm going to keep repeating what you've done here. But as I told you uh, at the first meeting in October of 2013, you're not here to replace uh, our superintendent or educational system. You are here to convert our public schools to charters, renaissance, vouchers, choice, or whatever, takes money away from, in other words, a corporate takeover. A corporate takeover of our public school dollars. That's what's happened. And that's why you are here. That was the last speaker. Public comment is over. All right, let me uh, begin by thanking our host again uh, for opening up the doors here at Cape Cooper Norcross. Uh, really appreciate it. I want to also thank the families. I think there was one parent from Mastery and a number from Kip who spoke. Uh, I know it's not always easy uh, getting behind that microphone, so I uh, certainly appreciate your advocacy on behalf of your school, and uh, we're, we're grateful to hear that you've had uh, such a positive experience thus far. Uh, jump into some of the specific comments. There's, you know, 
start with a theme in some of the comments, a, a theme that's not new to our board meetings, uh, came up. Mr. Frazier, um, Mr. Barfield, Mr. Farmer, Mr. Waters, insofar as what are we doing to support our district schools, uh, separate but unequal came up a handful of times. And I guess to try and respond to it slightly differently, um, one way I think about that is before this school opened up its doors, before any Renaissance school came into Camden, we, you know, so we keep hearing separate but equal, and this represents separate but unequal. Where was the outrage when Whittier's building was falling apart, yet the students at Camden High were in a beautiful, glistening facility? It sure feels like separate but unequal to me. And here we are. That's not the stories I hear from the families that I talk to. So the board meetings today, the, 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 the noise level has been elevated is my point. No one can argue that argue against that, the noise level has been elevated, okay? And I appreciate the advocacy, but my bigger point is three years later, we have more students in higher quality facilities on track to receive an excellent education than we did before this administration started. And that's a good thing. I get that governance structure is complicated. I get that not everyone is on board with charter and renaissance schools. I totally get that. But our graduation rate is up three consecutive years for those that are arguing that we're not doing enough for our high school students. It's not to say it's perfect. We see signs of progress. There are facilities being renovated that have been neglected for a very long time. But I also recognize the fact that there has been a lot, there have been a lot of broken promises in, in this city. There's been a lot of, there's been bait and switching going on here for decades and decades. And at the root of it is challenges that this city has had systemically. At the root of it is institutional racism. At the root of it is poverty. And so all of those things are real. And Monique, I hear you and like what, what you're saying about we've got to think about the family structure. And we're not ignorant to that point. We have a pilot now where we're going into the homes of our most chronically absent, the most at-risk students. I was in the home of a student just yesterday. Uh, and basically his home situation, it's basically uninhabitable. He's in the process of moving out and we're trying to transfer him to a different school, another, another public school. And we're trying to holistically care for these students. We need to take that effort to the next level and pull even more families in. And we're, we want to dedicate additional resources because poverty is at the root of our challenge. And I, so I by no means think this is all about this school type versus that school type. Uh, we're with you on that. And I think maybe at our next board meeting we can have a bigger conversation uh, about that specific initiative, but also just kind of the bigger point that you're making. So some of the specific um, points that were raised. You know, Gary, you talked about budgeting and community schools. Uh, community schools, we will allocate sufficient budgeting it's not something that is cost prohibitive in that we already have a community school coordinator at every school. It's more about the planning and being deliberate about how we're pulling in nonprofits, how we're pulling in families. Yes, we may have to allocate additional funds to allow for some of these partnerships to thrive, to maybe hire an additional social worker to think about the wraparound support services, but it's not something that we have to worry about the budget. We will have those resources, and I also am grateful that NJEA is stepping up and also contributing. Ms. Vida, your concern about the fire drill bonzel, uh, for those of you that are also wondering about what happened there, and my staff can jump in here if I miss the details. What happened was that they, the, the two schools worked together and had scheduled a fire drill on Three Kings Day. The, our principal uh, at Bonzel, uh, in, inadvertent mistake, she didn't realize that we were off for Three Kings Day, whereas Bonzel Camden Prep was on for Three Kings Day. So they moved forward with the fire drill, uh, and then when uh, the other school was back in session, they had a separate fire drill. Shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have happened. I'll own it. It shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We. Thank, thank you for doing that.
you, you noted, noted, noted. Noted, thank you. Ms. Jocelyn, you raised some questions about science resources. Katrina, I don't know if there was anything you wanted to respond to specifically. Uh, she asked a few questions about which science subjects are being dealt with uh, and a couple other follow-up questions. I don't know if there's anything you want to add there. Just really quickly, and Ms. Jocelyn, we can talk again at the end of the meeting. Um, that's not a problem, but you did also raise a question about technology and whether there would be resources we have built into the budget funds to be able to purchase iPads and, and mobile carts that would support just science instruction. So they would be utilized um, for if it's digital textbooks, if it's um, experiments, CTL at the Center for Teaching and Learning, to be able to do that, we have placed money in the 2016-17 budget. So that would not, you wouldn't see that until uh, September. And also, an environmental science will definitely be included as a part of the curriculum. So that is something that's um, being worked on now. Um, you're welcome. And we will look into the Petty Island trip. Uh, Ms. McCray, you asked about the replacement keys. So w the note I have here from my staff, and it may just be better to have a one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation, the request for keys was declined because there, there wasn't a name on it. Uh, so it seems like maybe it's an easy one we can fix. Um, maybe that's the case, maybe that's not the case, but either way, we'll follow up with you on that, okay? Monique, you mentioned the hiring freeze and nine vacancies, just a couple clarifications. There, there are six vacancies, there's no hiring freeze. We are actively looking to hire for those positions. Happy to talk to you. Yes, yes. So that's just, that's bad information. So six vacancies, we're actively looking to hire. Um, Mr. I totally hear you, totally hear you. I can give you a kind of a full debrief as far as the efforts we've taken to hire. Um, Mr. Barfield, you mentioned the parent-teacher conferences. So the, the, our contract uh, with uh, you know, our teachers' union contract allows for two quarters of parent-teacher conferences for the extended leave. Uh, so we do it in the first and third quarter. So that's, that's driven by the collective bargaining agreement. Um, QSAC review, we, we'd be happy to share with you the materials. So let's just take that one offline. We'll get you what you need there. And, and Mr. Francis, just to close with this, you know, I mentioned uh, your, you know, your point about prioritized high schools, I, I would argue that we have. We have a double down initiative to catch up our kids at our comprehensive high schools. Our graduation rate is up three years in a row to show that those efforts are paying off, not specifically the double down, but just in general. Like clearly high schools are a huge concern for us and, uh, and, and, and we take that very, very seriously. Katrina and others, did I leave anything out um, on, some of the, on some of the science questions in particular? Ms. Ferrante, go ahead. What positive statement can I make about Yorkshire Family School? Um, I, clearly, it is a school community that cares deeply about its school. And I see that whenever I go there. I saw you all at a number of events uh, at Yorkshire Square. Uh, I remember at the start of the school year, you all were there volunteering, handing out water bottles, uh, showing love for your community. And I see that time and time again, and I appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. That concludes uh, my responses to public comments. And I do that, have, yeah. um, Go ahead. I would like to speak to the public and let you know because um, in December, I did speak to the superintendent and reference some issues that I was concerned with, which actually did show up in this, uh, January in the New Jersey uh, CUSAC report. I can say to you that we've had a retreat since then, mm -hmm. and those things that um, I had talked to him about um, are being addressed through his staff. And the other thing is that there has been staff that we didn't have people in certain places. I can say now that he has put um, another person is in state and federal funding, Mr. Mel Rivers, who was working under the business administrator. Um, part of the problem that we would have would be that we would not have people in positions to carry out the needs of what the district called for. So, so that's part of it. I can't say that's all of it, that's part of it, but that's a major piece. So the first struggle that you have to get is the people in place to be able to do the work 
that is needed on behalf of our children, our parents, and our community. The next thing that I would like to talk to you about is the fact that um, the meetings that you're used to when you were seeing parental involvement and then you would see information, we would have those meetings and it was running on TV, those things were slowed down. So I can say to you that through Ms. Blackshear, the committees are being put back in place in the district. We're three years out from having them. Um, sometimes I feel like we went back five years when it's been three years without it being there. But when you work together as a partnership, then we can work together and you can move it. Sometimes you just feel like somebody coming in feels like they, they have to do something new, but basically we've been in the midst of it for years. So if we collaborate and we communicate, we can begin to make thing ha things happen on behalf of our children and our staff. Because we have to look out for our staff as well as our children because if you're not getting the professional development, you can't share that with our students. And we heard exactly what the, board, um, the student board members were saying. We hear you loud and clearly. Continue to speak out. And those are the things that we will continue to help you get those things put in place as an administration. Okay. I also want to say to you that the next couple meetings that we will have Next month, March 10th, will be Women's Month. There will be a meeting. It will be on our um, website because the business administrator and her staff working with family and community engagement will now be putting the information for parental involvement, for the DPAC, and for the PAC in the schools. You will get that information on the website. March 10th is Women's Month. And Ms. Renee Muhammad, who is the first female firefighter for the city of Camden will be the speaker. We are proud of her because she came in and started in parental involvement. When I was at Camden High School, she worked along with us. The month of April will be parental involvement, district parent, and um, district parent day where we work collaboratively. And the speaker that is coming in for us will be um, the NAACP state president, Mr. Richard Smith and he will be talking about um, civil rights and equity. Let's so, jump. Let's jump into park next board meeting. All right, Gary. Uh, okay. Just, just, so just want to close time, out here. We're going to entertain. I will entertain a motion okay. to adjourn the meeting, and you can speak as soon as we close out. So I will entertain a motion to close. At this time, I call for a motion to adjourn. Motion moved. Can I? Second. Is there a second? Second. Motion to adjourn was made by Taisha Munir and Minister Muhammad. Yes. All in favor adjourn say yes. 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 All opposed say no. We are now adjourned.